Afternoon, everybody. This is Anthony from Amped Airsoft, and I got my battle buddy, Matthew. And today we are going to be talking about a long-awaited product that we've been uh, chomping at the bit to get at, and this is the Tipman M4. Tipman is a paintball company. A while ago, they released. Uh, a product that kind of revolutionized the paintball market, and that was the Tipman A5 paintball gun. Basically, the AK-47 of the paintball gun world. You could toss it in the water, you could trash on it, and the stuff just worked. It wasn't overly complicated, didn't perform super high, but it never failed. It always just worked. And so now they've made the transition into the airsoft gun market with the Tipman M4. So I'm excited. You excited? This thing is fun. This thing is fun. <laughs> I like it a lot. So go ahead and go over the operation, like how it works on the inside. All right, so we finally got this bad boy in, and it is basically a completely mechanical HPA gun. So you have no FCU, no battery. It literally functions and cycles itself off of the air running through it. And it also is, I mean, we would, I guess we can consider it a blowback because it has a functioning it buffer tube. It has a functioning buffer tube and recoil system. So every shot that's fired, there is a reciprocating uh, buffer assembly that goes back into the gun and it gives them a sense of recoil. Mm -hmm. It also has this awesome buffer tube spring noise and right next to your head and you shoot it like a real AR. Mm -hmm. Super, super sweet. I think it's awesome. When you buy this gun, retails around $450 US, you get a lot in the box. You get a ton of stuff in the box. Like they just throw stuff at you. Um, and as you can see, we've laid out a lot of it in front of us right here. So you're going to obviously get a metal receiver gun. Uh, 14 and a half inch outer barrel. You get these Magpul style flip up sights. Mm -hmm. um, you get a mag, which we'll go over in a little bit. And then you get all this stuff that we have since taken off the gun to replace with some other cool swanky stuff. We made it look a little sexier. You get this uh, awesome polymer handguard that has replaceable rail segments on it, which I think is actually really sweet. It's a really cool design. And you can also do them at 45 degree angles. Yep, you can that do them offset angles and cool stuff like that. It comes with shorts and longs. Mm -hmm. um, you get this railed front gas block. You get an AR tool for the delta ring and the stock and the buffer tube, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, you get tons of extra bolts for everything. You get uh, extra lubrication. You get a rear sling plate, A-tube style pistol grip, which is actually like a real A-tube style pistol grip because it's thin. It's not like an AEG one. LE stock. And then you get this little guy right here, which is a CO2 adapter for the inside of the gun. And what that allows you to do then is run CO2 in mag. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through all the stuff that uh, needs to be set up to run it as an HPA gun. So you got that sitting over there right next to you, bro. Yes, we do. All right, for this guy, uh, you can use your standard, you know, like we all use here, our Ninja Tanks. This is a 45... It's a 4500 yep, PSI, PSI The difference is they use no regulation for this. You have to run... You can't use an SLP tank. You have to use a standard paintball tank, and it runs direct from tank. No mm -hmm. regulator needed. Was the, they said this thing runs about what PSI? Six to eight hundred somewhere mm -hmm. in there, six to eight hundred psi, and, and on CO two it'll run around nine hundred psi. Mm -hmm. So it will function on all of that. The thing about running it on HPA is that when you do that, you're going to need to have a forty five hundred psi or anything above paintball tank pressure hose. You can't run a standard amp line or macro line or anything like that because you'll blow it all out. Mm -hmm. um, this one we have outfitted with a Ninja slide check too, so that way we can dis disconnect the hose even when it's under pressure, which is a good thing that you guys should probably look into getting. And if you don't have one, it's uh, best to bleed the system. You can just shoot it on semi-auto, and then it'll do this funny little, like, like fart, fall, fully automatic burp, and then, then you've bled the system so you won't have the line pop off on you. But yeah, we'll run standard tanks, no SLP. It requires that high-end pressure just to keep the gun running. Um, CO2 setup. Now, here's the cool thing about the CO2 setup. Is it the CO2 setup? You can hold that, bro. CO2 setup comes with this little fun guy right here. This guy right here replaces the part inside the uh, the trigger box area of the gun right here. Mm -hmm. Kind of like lives in this region, like right in here somewhere. Huh? And then what happens is every single mag, you put a CO2 canister in. Now, one CO, one 12 gram CO2 canister, if you push it down in there, one 12 gram CO2 canister will run a full mag worth of operation, which will also include all the cycling parts of the gun. Mm -hmm. If you drop the mag early, you're going to purge all the CO2, though. And you get it, the mag is 80 rounds? Uh, the standard Tipman that comes with it, I believe. It's at least, I believe it's 80 yeah, to 100. Yeah, so it's an 80 to 100 round mag. So you get a pretty decent amount of shots. 
Um, it's really cool. Now, these mags, if you're thinking you're going to run no hose, standalone gun, most gas blowback mags are anywhere from like $30 to $50. These guys are only 20 bucks. So it's not too uneconomical to think of running it just as a standalone gun because mm -hmm. you get a dual in the box. It comes with both power systems. So you get mm -hmm. the HPA setup and you get the CO2 setup. So you can run it however you want. Um, the only thing I will say is that, you know, running a, a 12 gram in every single one of your mags and every time you do a mag change, if there's any left, mm -hmm. you're just going to lose it. Or if you do a mag early, um, you, yeah, you bump your mag release on accident. You're just going to, you're going to lose that. And then you have to slam this thing in there to get it to puncture. You got to like, Bam. You have to like, like hat mac that thing in there to get it to yeah, even blaze off level to even, twelve to even uh, <laughs> puncture the thing. So that that's that can be it's cool. You know, a I little mean, annoying it, in a firefight. It's a little annoying, but like if you guys who love realism, it's it's pretty swank cool. I like it. Mm -hmm. So when we got it, um, I wasn't here yet because I was still with my family. But when it showed up, everybody was super jazzed to play with it, and. We haven't. We're getting ready to go take it out to games. We're gonna probably take it to Shelby and stuff like that, and run mm -hmm. it, run it through its paces. Um, so far, super fun to shoot. <laughs> Performance is not what you'd expect with most HPA guns. It's just it's. It's not like a Polar Star or an SMP where it's winging shots way out there. It's just, it's, it's hop up is a really simplistic system. And like, we're having issues with full auto right now. Now, so we're not going to really give you much of a review because that could be something that we screwed up because we took it apart and didn't really read the instructions first. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk to the Tipman techs and make sure everything's all kosher with the gun first before we give you an actual review because we might have screwed it up. Yeah, that's one thing we... As with any airsoft gun, especially this one, First they gave you a very, very in-depth uh, manual with it. I mean, every down to like doing eighth of a turns on adjustment screws, read the entire thing before you even like yeah. take the plastic off of this thing because we, you know, we got excited, ooh, new gun, and we, we just did mad science to it immediately, so... We're, we're currently looking through that one, so... Yeah, so we're going to track down any issues that we have before we give you an actual straight-up review. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, things super fun to shoot. You can adjust the rate of fire mechanically. You can adjust the FPS mechanically. Um, the barrel system's kind of wonky how the barrel goes in and out, but, you know, that's cool. But it uses standard AEG barrels and buckings. Mm -hmm. um, no nubs or anything like that. It has its own proprietary system. Overall, I think it's really sweet. I can't wait to run it. Um, I'm going to have a blast. <laughs> Oh, that thing's dirty. Hit it. Let's hit it. Um, so what's your overall impressions of it? Good? Yes. Um, I like for it. Just for the sole airsoft factor of this thing is a blast to shoot. So fun. It's, I mean, I'm, I come from more of an AEG background you know, uh, before I like came to the shop and everything. And then this, this thing would be... My initial takes on it would be that this thing is kind of an initial go between AEGs and HPA, you know, Polar Stars, SMPs that we're very well acclimated with. But this thing is just a blast to shoot. So it's fun. it is we've just from like taking videos of it and the testing stages, standing here shooting it as opposed to the other end of the barrel is a completely different sound. It's it's very loud if you're on the receiving end which we think is going to be a very fun thing, especially in CQB. Oh, it's going to be we, so fun. We're probably going to scare some people, hopefully. Um, I love it. I think it's this really cool go-between between a gas blowback and an HPA gun. I love that it comes with all the parts you need. I love that it's $450 and comes with everything to run two setups. Mm -hmm. I love that it's got a nice metal receiver, and I love the feedback. I love being able to feel it kick into my shoulder when I pull the trigger. I love feeling the trigger reset whenever I'm pulling the trigger. Mm -hmm. I love hearing that buffer tube spring as it's actuating. I love the loud, loud noises this thing makes. It's it's incredibly violent sounding. Mm -hmm. I think in and of itself, I think if you really want that second type of cool, like, you know, it functions, but then you want that, like, experience, this is going to be a good go-to. I think it's going to be great. And mechanical, I mean, I love my Polar Star, but bad wiring harnesses and getting FCUs wet, that can be a real drag Frying out many lipos. This is all mechanical. So mm -hmm. 
if it stops working, clean it, <laughs> put yeah. it back together, and it should just start working again. Mm -hmm. um, I can't wait to play with it more. So when we get a better, more in-depth view on it, let you guys know. So check us out on uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat. Oh, worst move. Um, check you have us to be able on, to find that before I give it to you. Check us out on our social media. This has been Anthony. Matt. Thanks for stopping by, guys. See ya.